When I said you go across that aisle and hug your daughter, the first thing you did was look at your wife for permission. Mm -hmm. I didn't miss that. Amen by that. Amen and I by want that. to make sure we're clear if no one's let you know. You don't need permission to love your child. Amen. That's right. Yes, ma'am. I'm going to be straight up. When Miss Lipscomb first started talking, I didn't believe for one minute that she didn't really know you were married until you sat down in this chair and confirmed the lie you told her. Oh, I didn't tell her no lie. I just didn't never mention it to her. She oh. never had I, I had no father at all. So I didn't want my son to grow up and not know who his father is. Yes, I admit to my wrong. I was wrong for messing with two guys at the same time. But I'm here today to try to prove to him that that is his son. You know what I'm saying? And it hurt me because my son asks about him every day. This is already sounding like it's going to be a crazy ride. The court session starts, and Judge Lake jumps right into it, addressing everyone. Things are just getting warmed up, and you won't believe what comes next. Miss Jackson, you've dragged your ex-boyfriend to court to prove he fathered your 26-year-old daughter, Tanika. Uh, you claim he's denied her since birth because you were caught in a love triangle with him and his wife. It's about to get real messy. Miss Jackson says Mr. Brown owes her a whopping $2,624 in child support. Sparks are already flying, and this is just the start. Stay tuned for more shouting. One week ago, you reopened your child support case in which you state Mr. Brown owes you $20,624.08. That's that yes, Your Honor. Mr. Brown, you and your wife claim you can't be the father because you were on the road for three months during the time of conception. That's true, Your Honor. You've basically taken care of your daughter alone. Yes. Oh, here we go. Ms. Jackson says she met Mr. Brown at a club where he told her Drusilla was just a friend. Later that night, they end up at an apartment. And who barges in? You guessed it. Drusilla. Ms. Jackson had no clue this was going to be drama central. And you'll never believe what's coming up. I met him at the club and we started talking. We started dancing. He told me he'll be back when he left with his wife, Miss Brown. I asked him who she was. He told me if she was just a friend. So he came back to the club and then we went to the apartment. We was in the back of the room. She came in the door. She said, come on out. Let me talk to you. I didn't know that he was dating her because he told me they had broke up. Drusilla Drusilla is not letting this go. She catches Mr. Brown and Ms. Jackson together again, this time in a club bathroom. Drusilla let Ms. Jackson go, kept her eyes on her man, and just when you think it can't get any crazier, it totally does. He wasn't in the club. I said, well, one person could be because his car was still outside. So we, I knocked and knocked on the door, the bathroom. I said, Dwight, I know you're in there. I said, open this door. He cracked it a little bit. So when I pushed it so... open, she in there, then him in the bathroom. But I told her, I said, you can go. So you find him in the club in the bath? Yes, ma'am. Okay. This part is like something out of a sitcom. Drusilla comes home and hears noises coming from her closet. You can just feel Drusilla's frustration as she realizes Mr. Brown is still fooling around. And if you thought this was wild, there's a lot more coming. When I got to my apartment, I unlocked the door with the key. So at that point, I heard my closet door slide open. When I got inside, I went right to the closet, opened the door. She stayed up there naked, had a, my husband, my man in my house. So even, you know, he kept fooling around with her, like you say, going back and forth. So, I so you knew that he kept an affair going with her? Yeah, often. Oh, yes. Mr. Brown finally admits he's been with both women at the same time, uh, unprotected, but he's also throwing shade, saying he saw Ms. Jackson with another man, so he doubts he's the dad. This love triangle is a total mess, and it just keeps getting messier as they go deeper into the story. Were you sleeping with both of them without protection? Yes. So why do you deny that Tanika is your daughter if you know you've been with this woman over a fan of time? I've seen too many things happen, like, one morning, I thought she was at work. Come find out, she was out with another man. Things are getting juicy. Ms. Jackson presents a birth certificate saying Mr. Brown is Nika's dad, and Drusilla and Mr. Brown are not having it. This isn't just a paternity case. It's turning into a full-blown mystery, and everyone's hanging on to see what'll pop up next. I have proof that Mr. Brown signed my birth certificate. I'd like to see that. That's, birth that's a birth certificate that was, that's a fake, Your Honor. That is a fraud. Her <laughs> mama been lying to her. So, so wait, on this birth certificate, it does say Dwight Stanley Brown. He named he didn't me sign and he that. spelled the name. He was with me doing a tag that birth name certificate. Name this now, I do birth not see a signature on this birth certificate, Because he did not though. sign it. Was, it. Drusilla is spilling more tea. She says she tried for years to get Ms. Jackson to agree to a DNA test, but Ms. Jackson always dodged it. It's a total blame game, and Drusilla's got receipts, so you know it's about to get even spicier. She said, let me keep calling me. That's an insult about DNA testing. Every time we ask for something. Same thing in 1992. Okay, then we went to Ms. Jackson again. Went up to the lab again to get a DNA testing. I paid my money. 
My husband didn't pay child support. I did. I took care of her. That's true. This story is so dramatic. Judge Lake points out the irony in Drusilla's complaints, saying, it's the same lady in your closet. Drusilla tries to act like the problem is solved, but Judge Lake reminds her they're here to see if Mr. Brown is really Tanika's dad. Hold on tight because the moment of truth is about to drop. It's the same lady. It's in your closet. Same lady that's behind the bathroom door. Yeah. Same, it's the same lady. But it, that doesn't mean that Tanika is not your husband's biological well, that's child. That's all I ever wanted to know, Your Honor. Well, that's his daughter. That's Anna. why we're here. Yes, right. ma'am. Brown the envelope, please. Yes, ma'am. This is it, the big reveal. Judge Lake opens the DNA results, and yes, Mr. Brown is confirmed to be Tanika's dad. Emotions are flying everywhere, but don't leave yet. There's still one more twist. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Brown, you are her father. Jesus. This last bit is unbelievable. Judge Lake asks Mr. Brown to hug his daughter, and he actually looks over at his wife to check if it's okay first. With that, the courtroom wraps up, but Judge Lake leaves everyone with some wise words on family, forgiveness, and facing the truth. When I said you go across that aisle and hug your daughter, the first thing you did was look at your wife for permission. Mm -hmm. I didn't miss that. Amen by that. Amen and I by want that. to make sure we're clear if no one's let you know. You don't need permission to love your child. Amen, that's right. Yes, yes. All right, folds. Things get wild right from the start. Miss Jackson tells everyone she's here to confront her husband's mistress and prove this baby isn't his. You can already feel the tension, and we're only getting started. Miss Jackson, you say you're here to confront your husband's mistress and to prove her one-month-old daughter, Kiasia, is not his biological yes, daughter. Yes, Your Honor. Furthermore, you say, if you learn today that the child is in fact your husband's, your marriage is over. That's right, Your Honor. Just when you think it can't get crazier, Miss Lipscomb, the mistress, stands her ground and says she knows the baby is Mr. Jackson's. With the audience hanging on every word, you can tell this showdown is only heating up. Miss Lipscomb, you say that you have no doubt your child is her husband's daughter. You claim he had sex with you, made a baby, and now she needs to deal with the truth. Mr. Jackson is waiting outside of the courtroom and will meet him shortly. But first, Miss Jackson, tell me, how did you find out your husband may be having a child with what? his mistress. And Miss Jackson spills the tea on how she found out about the affair, and wow, it's juicy. Trust me, this argument is only getting messier. I got an epiphany, call it woman's intuition, whatever you want. Well, I went to my husband's job, it was about 9.30 or 10.30 at night. He, he approached the car, we talked for a few minutes. I feel as though there's something going on that you hadn't told me. Your Honor, and as we were standing outside talking, we are in the front of the building, the defendant pops up in the car like she's Ricky Raccoon or somebody, Your Honor. <laughs> Upon hearing my voice. If you thought this story couldn't get more awkward, wait until you hear how Mr. Jackson introduced his wife. Miss Jackson claps back, pointing out there's a big difference between wife and BM. And oh, this back and forth is just the beginning of the name calling. But she was always labeled as my BM, which is my baby mother. BM does not spell wife. Wife is spelled W-I-F-E. It didn't dawn on me to ask, are you married now? Because if you're married now, why have you been living in a room for three to four months? And I he have a key to your room. room. To I got months. clothes in your room. I'm in your room she every day, every panties, night. Your Honor. I'm in his room, room every day, every night. Panties, I've never seen this woman. So he never he said my wife put money. me out. Mr. Jackson finally shows up, and things get even weirder when he admits he didn't tell Miss Lipscomb he was married. The crowd cheers, but you just know there's more awkwardness on the way. Miss Lipscomb says she had no idea you had a wife. No, she didn't, because I never mentioned it to her, Your Honor. So that part of her statement is true. I'm gonna be straight up. When Miss Lipscomb first started talking, I didn't believe for one minute that she didn't really know you were married until you sat down in this chair and confirmed the lie. You told her. Oh, I didn't tell her no lie. I just didn't never mention it to her. She oh. never asked. I think Miss Jackson might be done surprising us. She says she spent nearly $900 on stuff for the baby, even though she doubts the baby is her husband's. This kindness is something, but don't worry, things are still a total mess. Not only have we had conversations, before I didn't deny the child, I went and bought over 900 and some dollars worth of stuff for her baby, uh, Your Honor. From the conversation, Your Honor, she seemed really distraught. She said that I don't know how it feels not to know who your child's father is, Your Honor. So as a woman, I feel obligated woman to woman, whether it's my husband's child or not, out of the kindness of my heart, your Honor. And the plot thickens. Judge Lake asks Miss Lipscomb if the affair stopped once Mr. Jackson went to jail, and she flat out admits it didn't. The audience gasps as she confesses they were still friendly, and you can practically feel everyone waiting to see what's going to come out next. Miss Lipscomb, did the affair end when he went to jail? Yes, ma'am. So you have not been intimate with him since? Yes, ma'am, I have. I'm not even gonna lie. <laughs> 
What happened when you found out your mistress was pregnant? I found out when I was in jail, cause I guess the beginning of the year, her birthday time, she got sick and went to the hospital. And my wife told me that she said she was pregnant then. Miss Jackson pulls out some surprising evidence, hinting there might be another possible father. Judge Lake digs in, ready to uncover more about Miss Lipscomb's love life. You believe that there's another man Miss Lipscomb has been involved with sexually, Holy, Your Honor. That could be the father of this child, Miss Lipscomb. When you had the Baby, was he at the hospital? Did he cut the cord? He didn't cut the cord, but he was there. So he did come for yes. the birth? Yes. Here's where things go from bad to worse. Mr. Jackson admits he signed the birth certificate, making the baby his legal child. Judge Lake can't believe what she's hearing, and you can tell she's about to dive deeper into this messy situation. Mr. Jackson, did you sign the birth certificate? Yes. Oh. Yep. Why would he sign could the birth I, certificate? I, even more to speak on so her Mr. behalf. Mr. Jackson, you've acknowledged paternity. Yes. Your Honor, that's why the baby was placed on my benefit. He automatically claimed all legal and financial responsibilities to that child because he is deemed as my dependent on my military benefits, at which time that child becomes my dependent as well on my benefit. And just when you think things are cooling down, Miss Jackson drops a big surprise. She's pregnant. Now, the room is buzzing, and everyone's looking at Miss Lipscomb, wondering how she'll respond to this news. What did you you just say, Mr. I'm pregnant now. I'm due May 5th. Mr. Jackson knows about it. I've invited him to doctor's appointment. Um, he and I talked about it. He said to me, well, I don't care what nobody thinks because you my wife. And at the end of the day, that's just what it is. You my wife and I don't care what people think. So, Mr. Jackson, now mm -hmm. your wife is pregnant. That's what she says she's pregnant, Your Honor. She so now you don't that. believe she's pregnant? I don't know if she is or she's not, Your Honor. Judge Lake isn't impressed with Mr. Jackson's non-committal attitude and wants some answers. Judge Lake is so over his wishy-washy replies, she's about to give him a reality check. Do you it's believe Keasia is your child? Yes, Your Honor, it could be a possibility. It is a possibility. Yes. And yet you did sign the birth certificate yes, and acknowledge paternity. Yes, Your Honor. So you legally are the father of this child. Yes. Are you paying child support? No. Judge Lake's patience hits zero as she calls out both women for their endless bickering. The judge's words hit hard, but you know there's one final twist coming up. Yeah. Just a beautiful little girl. But what I dislike most about this situation is that we have been here talking back and forth about the nonsense, messiness that you caused, and you realized he was causing and still got pregnant by him again, and we're not talking enough about Keasia. Yes, Your Honor. The big moment is here. The paternity results are revealed and jaws drop. Mr. Jackson, you are not the father. Oh! Well, thank you. It's still over. Things are getting wild right out of the gate here, folks. Judge Lake kicks things off with the case of McKeever versus Arnold, where Ms. McKeever is trying to prove Mr. Arnold is the father of her kid and wants him to pay up for childcare. And just wait, because this family feud is only getting started. Ms. McKeever, you say you have no doubt that Mr. Arnold is your three-year-old son, Kenneth's biological father. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, you've requested a paternity test and are suing Mr. Arnold for $1,796 in childcare expenses. Yes, Your Honor. You won't believe Mr. Arnold's confidence as he stands there, saying he shouldn't pay anything for this kid. He really thinks he can skip out on this because he just didn't show up? Oh, this is only getting crazier by the minute. Mr. Arnold, you and your aunt, Ms. Henderson, say that Ms. McKeever admitted to sleeping with two other men, but now you claim you're the one who's been put on child support for a boy who's definitely not yours. Yes, Your Honor. Judge Lake isn't having any of it and hits Mr. Arnold with some serious reality. But don't look away because things are about to get even messier. You've been required to pay child support? Yes, yeah, sure. You know that's a dangerous game, right? It's not my child, so why should I pay anything? I put, I got put on child support because of not showing up to a DNA test. Oh, you were named. This happens in this courtroom way too much. Young men in your position, you come to court and you, Your Honor, this is not my child, Your Honor. And then when I asked, did you have an opportunity to take a DNA test? And here's a plot twist. Ms. McKeever's sister, Ms. Cox, steps up and says she's been paying for all kinds of things for the kid because Mr. Arnold hasn't paid a dime. She's ready to spill some tea, and it's only adding fuel to the family drama. And you've been helping out. Yes, ma'am, I have. Paying for expenses. Haircuts, shoes, clothes, milk, anything that little boy needs. If she calls me, he have it, you know. With the understanding that... 
she's responsible for paying you back this month. And, and that is, yes. Get ready for a bombshell. Mr. Arnold's aunt, Ms. Henderson, says there's a mystery guy that might be the real father, not her nephew. This whole maybe another dad twist really shakes things up, but the tea is still brewing. Everything is not being said. There was another young man involved who was supposed to be these kids' dad. Two years, now all of a sudden, my nephew is being blamed for these kids. Because if they was, why would you name another man saying that they was the dad? Who is this young man? Do I, you know? I don't know him personally. Who is no, this I other don't. young man, Ms. McKeever? The other young man that I was with, he ended up going away. Ms. McKeever dives into the timeline of her romantic encounters, and let's just say it's complicated. Judge Lake looks like she's about to need a flow chart to keep up with this one. Pretty much you were with Mr. Arnold, having sex with him unprotected you the whole month of December. But when you got pregnant, your doctor told you that the window of conception was about 24th of December to the 31st. Yes. You say you were intimate with the other guy. December 26th. December 26th. And now for a plot twist straight out of a soap opera, Ms. McKeever reveals that she already did a DNA test with this other guy, and it came back negative, so he's not the dad. No DNA evidence? This drama isn't done just yet. The other guy that I was intimate with, he decided to get the DNA test. It was not my decision, it was his. I had a DNA test done, and the DNA test came back. It said 0%. But so what I did was... Do you have any evidence of that test? No, I don't have no, the evidence don't. with me. And she wouldn't let us get a copy, and she wouldn't let us take a picture of it so we could have some evidence. Things get real emotional as Ms. McKeever explains her past, revealing she grew up without a father and doesn't want that for her son. She's pouring her heart out, and Judge Lake listens carefully, ready to bring everyone back to the main point. I had no father at all, so I didn't want my son to grow up and not know who his father is. So it hurt me a lot for his family to sit up here and try to make me out as a bad person. Yes, I admit to my wrong. I was wrong for messing with two guys at the same time, but I'm here today to try to prove to him that that is his son, you know what I'm saying? And it hurt me because my son asks about him every day. Judge Lake delivers a serious pep talk to Mr. Arnold, telling him he needs to take responsibility and make his own choices. The clock is ticking, and it's clear Mr. Arnold needs to get it together before it's too late. So now you're here. Even if it's determined that you're not this child's biological father today, that does not change the legal issue you're faced with, is that you have been named this child's father by default for failure to show up. And then go from there, and there's no guarantee. Do you understand this? Yes, Your Honor. Here we go, the big moment everyone's been waiting for. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Arnold, you are his father. Step up, baby. Step up. Okay. This case is about to get messy. The courtroom kicks off with the case of Tisby versus Quarterman, where Ms. Tisby believes Mr. Quarterman is the father of her daughter, Jordane, and has been dodging a DNA test. You can already tell this one's going to be full of wild twists and turns. Ms. Tisby, you were in love with the defendant and claim he has been ducking your request for a DNA test for your daughter, Jordan. You and your mother say he better step up and be a daddy when today's results prove what you've always known, that he is Jordan's father. Right off the bat, Mr. Quarterman throws some serious shade. He claims Ms. Tisby only shows up to ask for money and doesn't believe he's the dad. This is just the beginning, but you can already feel the room heating up. Mr. Quarterman, you say the plaintiff is delusional and is only trying to use you for money, and when the results reveal you are not her child's biological father, you want her out of your life for good. Correct. Oh, Mr. Quarterman, you say she's using you for your money? Anytime they come around, it's about money. Yes, ma'am. Now it gets even more awkward. They can't even agree on what their relationship was. Ms. Tisby Tisby says they were together, and he even said, I love you, while Mr. Quarterman claims it was just a casual fling. This whole were we, or weren't we, thing has everyone scratching their heads. I felt like we was in a relationship, because basically he was coming around the whole time. He even told me he loved me, so. That sounds like a relationship. Yeah, you honestly, love her, you no, I mean, come I around all her. the time. I have love for her, but not in love with her. She came about in a time in my life where, uh, you know what I'm saying, I was kind of down and out, and me and her both was helping each other. The baby situation came about, you know, and I told her from the beginning, since it was another guy. And then, boom! Ms. Tisby's mom takes the stand and makes things way more dramatic. Just when you think it's all cleared up, a new twist jumps in. No. So wait a minute, you pick him up and bring him <laughs> over to your house? I bring it to him. We own stayed house. they <laughs> door to each other. We had a two-stair house. She stayed on one side of the house, and I had my own house. But it's at night, he creeped at night. And sometimes I see him sometimes on uh, me uh, in the daytime, but he basically was staying there at night. Things get real emotional as Ms. Tisby talks about Jordane's birth 
and some truly heartbreaking stuff. Emotions are running high, and it's clear this story has layers on top of layers. When Jordan was born, Mr. Quarterman was there or not there? No, he wasn't. When I was pregnant, I told him everything. He came when I was pregnant, holding my stomach and everything, doing all of that. But now, she's not yours. Tell me about the birth. On the 16th of April, I had her. On the 17th, they told me to come in the hospital because my little girl passed away. Just when you think you've heard it all, Mr. Quarterman pulls out the Facebook proof. The judge and everyone else can't believe they're looking at Facebook evidence in court. Who knows what's next? But uh, she had posted some things on online, asking, you know, I guess Facebook about am I the father or not. What? What are you submitting to the court, sir? Yes, a Facebook post. She was asking Facebook, do I look like the child or, you know, whatever the Oh, case it's was. a split screen of baby Jordan. Yes, ma'am. And you. And That's she act, writes, oh. do, do she look like him, yeah or no? Nah? For us to be in a relationship and everything like that, that is a booking photo for when I got arrested. Get ready for the they totally look alike argument as Ms. Tisby's mom brings out baby photos. The courtroom's buzzing and everyone's waiting to see if this who looks like who thing will actually help. What Are evidence did you bring, ma'am? Let me Two see. Two baby pictures. And one thing about about Yana, let me speak. I understand what he trying to say, but if you lay with somebody, you got to pay the cost. Y'all lay together, y'all stay together, y'all been together. You could deny what you want to deny, <clears throat> but like I said, now when this baby come out to be yours. Now things go from heated to about to explode as everyone argues. It's getting wild in here, and all eyes are on Judge Lake to see what she'll say next. And, I and that's why your people. daughter just handed up this particular evidence. The first picture is a picture of Mr. Quarterman as a baby, and then the next picture is a picture of Jordan. You feel like they look exactly alike. Yes, ma'am. And you say even his family members say. Yes, Both his mother. Yep. His mother yep. said it. Mom. See that little girl there? That's a princess. She everything to me. And here it is, the big moment. Judge Lake opens the DNA results and drops the bomb. It has been determined by this court, Mr. Quarterman. You are not the father. What? Mm. Huh. Shantina. Mm. All right, this story is wild from the jump. Mr. Clark is suing Ms. Bailey to get a DNA test to see if he's the dad of her baby, Vanique, and wants one fifth hundred and sixty dollars for some clothes she allegedly torched. This courtroom is about to get messy, folks, and we're just getting started. Mr. Clark, you are suing the defendant for a DNA test and for one thousand five hundred sixty dollars for damages you claim she caused to your property because you deny paternity of her two-month-old daughter, Vanique. You say today you will prove you are not Vanique's father. Yes, Your Honor. Yep, you read that right. Right, Ms. Bailey straight up admits to burning his clothes. She says she was seven months pregnant, mad as a hornet, and couldn't handle that he left her for someone else. So she decided his clothes needed to go up in flames. But this bonfire is just the start of the drama. Ms. Bailey, you say you were on fire when Mr. Clark left you for another woman while pregnant with his child. Yes, I was. You are 100% certain he is your daughter's yes, father. Additionally, you are countersuing Mr. Clark for $300 for half of Vanique's childcare expenses over the last two months. If you thought this was just a breakup, Mr. Clark's cancer diagnosis takes this story to a whole other level. They're hanging on to that maybe with all they got, but we all know there's more drama coming. During this relationship, like, started growing up big, like it was a big tumor on the side of his neck. And so we went to the hospital, he found out he had cancer. He started his chemo sessions and everything, but before then... And you all they, were together when this happened? Yes. They said, are you guys interested in having children? And we both like, no. And they was like, well, there's an 80% chance that he can't have children during his chemo. So you and, know I can't have kids. But there's, there's still that Come 20% that he can. Mr. Clark's doubts just keep getting getting louder, thanks to both science and his new girlfriend whispering in his ear. Oh, the plot thickens, and he's definitely not done talking. Your doubt stems from the fact that as you're undergoing chemotherapy, you've been informed by your doc that this would affect your ability, possibly. Yes. And that's why they suggested to you freeze some of your sperm, because they knew that there was a chance that this treatment could affect your chances of having children. Yes, ma'am. You proceeded with your treatment. Here comes the science. They even brought in a doctor to clear things up. And things got even more confusing. Looks like the science talk didn't help, and now everyone's looking around like, what now? It depends on the type of chemo, the dose, the age of the patient. However, if you ask for general statistics, it is about 77%. How old were you at the time you were receiving the treatment, Mr. Clark? I started receiving treatments at the age of 26. Well, as you can see, Ms. Bailey is focused well, on that 20% chance. Unfortunately, it only takes one sperm. Ms. Bailey gets super emotional here, hoping Vanique can have a dad, especially since she grew up without one herself. It's a tearjerker moment, but we all 
all know Mr. Clark still got doubts, and it's about to get real again. Brings you to tears when you see your baby? Yes. Why? She doesn't need a father. And you really want that for her? Yes. I want you to take me to the birth. He was there. He cut the umbilical cord and everything. Really? So you Not were present for there. the birth, Mr. Clark? Yeah, I was there. She was, too. Really? Did you sign the birth certificate? No. I was gonna sign that birth certificate and she gave the baby my grandma's name and my last name. Now it's money time. Miss Bailey pulls out receipts showing she spent $600 on diapers, wipes, and formula in just two months. And she wants Mr. Clark to pay up. But trust me, that's far from the last argument we're gonna hear. Mm. You've submitted receipts to the court of the expenses you've incurred thus far. Yes. As it relates to baby Vanique. About $50 a week on diapers, formula, and wipe. I bought her totally car, about I bought $600. Her car seat, everything she needed. Everything you've paid yes. for yourself. And Mr. Clark, you admittedly have not contributed anything. No, ma'am. And that's why your countersuit is for $300, $300. half of $600. Yes. Now, Judge Lake doesn't mess around when it comes to burned clothes. He's got no problem telling Ms. Bailey she owes Mr. Clark $1,160 for turning his wardrobe into ashes. Ms. Bailey owes the money, but don't worry, the biggest shock is still on the way. So, because you willfully destroyed his property, I have to award him the $1,560 okay. from his clothing that you destroyed. Judgment for the plaintiff. Moving forward. I think we're ready for the results. Burn no clothes no more. You all done? Yes. A lot of unfinished business here. I hope you're taking note, Miss Hudson. I you am. quiet over there. Just poke, poke. Both of you, back and forth. You can't even get the result. Here comes the moment we've all been waiting for. DNA results are in, and it's a jaw dropper. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Clark, you are not the father. <laughs> I wanted him to be the father. I wanted him to be there. All right, folks, you won't believe what's about to go down in this courtroom. Judge Lake starts things off, introducing the case of Martin Visa Pinner. Ms. Martin admits she made a big time mistake around the time she got pregnant with her daughter, Royal Blue. Things are just heating up, and it's only the beginning. Ms. Martin, you admit to making a huge mistake around the time you conceived your daughter, Royal Blue. You claim that one moment of weakness will cost you your fiance if you cannot prove today that he fathered your child. This relationship sounds like it's hanging by a thread. Ms. Martin shares that things are so bad that Mr. Pinner has moved out of the bedroom and now lives in the living room. The tension between these two is wild, and you can just tell there's more drama on the way. Well, at this point, me and Romeo have no relationship because of the paternity of our daughter. I made one mistake back in the past that he knew about, and he, now he's claiming that he knows nothing about it. The relationship is Not in it. turmoil. Yes, he completely moved out of the bedroom. Like, he lives in my living room. Oh, and here's where Mr. Pinner's side of the story kicks in. And trust me, it's not pretty. His trust issues are real, and this whole thing is starting to sound like a soap opera. She says that she let me know right away, but it was m a month later after she found out that she You're was lying. pregnant. No, that's true. You know, when you feel like that, it's no, why would I fake it and just, you know, be laying in the bed with somebody that's already lied to me, then I'd be dishonest but, to the relationship. But you were laying you in were the before. You dishonest with me no. in the beginning, and you're dishonest with me now. The reason why I'm not sleeping in the bedroom is because I'm not sure if Royal is mine or not. Now, Ms. Martin tries to explain her side, and it's, well, messy. Their stories do not match up, and the arguments are getting louder. I'm going to tell her about the mistake. At the point in time, Romel was doing him, as we say, partying, not coming home. I completely moved to Wisconsin with him. I even said, if, you know, if I come up here for you, I'm about you, we're gonna do our family thing. And when I got up there, it went totally left. That's he, like, true. left me in the home by myself. It'd be true. days at a time before he saw Romeo. Just when you think you've got the story straight, Mr. Pinner drops his version of the truth, and it's totally different. These two can't agree on anything, and it's all going off the rails. So it's your testimony, Mr. Pinner, that she didn't tell you the day after the party. She told you one month <laughs> after she was already pregnant. Exactly, Your Honor. She said, well, I have something to tell you. You know, when I had that party, I woke up the next morning. I'm pretty sure I had sex, but I don't know who it is. Like I said, that's very irresponsible. Well, to this day, I don't even the know truth, the person. But I didn't wait a month. Who it was I told you the next day. I was honest from the jump. So, Ms. Martin. Hold on, because now they're bringing up all their issues from way back. Mr. Pinner claims Ms. Martin changed after having their first child, started partying more. Judge Lake points out they've both been playing the blame game, and it's seriously messy. Like, how do these two even live together? What? After she had our oldest daughter, she changed completely. I guess she felt like she missed something. She started to go out partying, kicking 
kicking Wait, it. What? Uh, in clubs. We I got a child. You leaving me here with a child. I work and go to work and try to take care of my family and provide. You are turning this whole thing around. I have around made only. my this mistake. Your... Excuse me. You're I, not. I have had made You're my not. mistake. Like but no. at the same point in time, we were supposed to work with it. Judge Lake isn't holding back here, giving some advice on why tit for tat never works out. The judge isn't sugarcoating anything, and you can feel the tension rising. She moves to a different state, following behind you. When she gets there, you still out and about doing things. He out hanging out. He don't want to come home. I'll start partying. We hear this too much. Now, the thing I tell women all the time, we lose the tit for tat every time because you lose your senses and you do something stupid and you get pregnant. Yes, ma'am. And here we go. Ms. Martin reveals she actually left Mr. Pinner during her pregnancy because things got so bad. Their arguments are all over the place, and it's hard to know who to believe at this point. He yes, participated for about three or four months. That's not true, Your Honor. He went to doctor appointments I bought, I bought, with me, Your Honor, yes, I did. until I decided one morning I woke because he didn't come home. I packed everything I owned in that house, and I went home. And it took him 24 hours to even realize I... It took all I had to pack up my daughter, me being pregnant, and all my clothes to go home to leave this man. Judge Lake takes a second to talk to Ms. Martin, who's clearly feeling guilty, and it's kind of intense. She says she regrets her mistakes and just wants her family back to This moment gets pretty real, and it makes you wonder if there's any hope for them. Like I said, Ms. Martin, we never win this game of tit for tat. And I can see how hurt you are, because I'm sure when you moved and followed him to Wisconsin, this is not what you had in your mind. No, ma'am. And to be honest with you, Mr. Penner, I'm sure this is not why you asked her to come. This is not what you planned either. No, no it wasn't. This is not what you all had in your mind. And I can see, Ms. Martin, you are not proud of what you did. This is not who you are. Judge Lake asks the million dollar question if Royal Blue is his daughter. Would Mr. Pinner actually stay? He says he would, but he needs to let go of the past. Judge Lake tells him he can't keep bringing up the party if they're going to move forward or they'll be back in court soon. This is the moment of truth. They're about to find out if he's really Royal Blue's dad. If Royal Blue is your biological daughter, can you unpack that bag? Yes, that's what I, exactly what I want to do. I'm a straight shooter in here now. When you unpack that bag, you have to unpack it with an intention to let go of the baggage of of the past. Yes, sir. Now, you just can't unpack the bag and then on a random Wednesday just decide you're gonna get mad again because she had that party. I understand what you're saying, Yana. Or we'll be back here again. All right, here we go. The big reveal. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Penner, you are the father. Ooh. Thank God.